I will do my best. But let me humbly offer just a few things as a church, ways I think we can respond healthy. Number one, speak with tenderness on this issue. Friends, speak with tenderness. There are so many hurting and so many wounded people out there, especially on this issue. A couple years ago, I had a friend who texted me. He goes, oh, McDowell, you better see this tweet that was sent out about you. I thought, oh, great. So I pull up this tweet, and the tweet says something to the effect of, Josh McDowell's son teaches kids how to love. Now, in case you didn't figure it out, my dad's been here a bunch of times. My dad is Josh McDowell. In fact, last week, we just separated, separated, celebrated. <laughs> you meant what I knew. We celebrated his 75th birthday. I told my dad, I said, man, dad, you're old. When God said, let there be light, you flipped on the switch. But some guy sends out this tweet, Josh McDowell's son teaches kids how to love. So I click on it. And I was in 2008 on this panel in California at a huge church in San Diego when the whole Proposition 8 issue was unfolding. You probably remember that. And I was asked a question live in front of probably 5,000 people. And I answered with a story, and then I explained the story. Well, a friend of mine took the story and sent it out to thousands of youth pastors all around, this, around the country. But he snipped my explanation of the story. Well, he loved this story and he meant well, but without my explanation, I could have been saying a lot of different things. So this guy in his blog just rips me. I am hateful, I'm bigoted. There's dozens of comments and people just ripping me in a way. I'm used to somewhat of public life getting criticized, but this was deeper than ever. And I've learned that when I'm upset like that, if I respond immediately, I'm just gonna say something unchristlike that I regret. So I take a deep breath, try to have a prayerful attitude about it. I wait a whole day. And then somebody sends in the whole video. And what's amazing is how many people, including Christians, crucified me without even having the context, which convinces me that many Christians don't even care about truth. But then it shows the whole context. Half of them are like, oh, that makes sense. I'm with him. The other half are like, it's even worse. We hate this guy. <laughs> So the next day I decide I'm going to write in a letter to this blogger. And I wrote him a letter. I went out of the way to find common ground, to be gracious, to be kind. I showed it to a family member of mine, not my dad. And this family member said, you need to be more firm and call him out for his wrong behavior. I said, you know what? It's not my job to correct somebody's behavior. Only God can convict somebody of sin. I'm going to speak lovingly but truthfully. He got my letter. He liked it so much, he put it on his blog without my permission, but that's a separate issue. And he said, I disagree with this guy. But when somebody responds tenderly and kindly, we should take note. And it hit me, I thought, my goodness, because I haven't always responded that way, that's for sure. Don't believe me, just ask my wife. But I'm working on it, and God's transforming me. But on this issue, friends, we must Speak with tenderness. Second, do not allow gay jokes or comments. Don't do it. It needs to stop. In fact, if any of us in this room have told gay jokes, we need to repent of it now. I have a young person I talked to recently, and he said he found out he had same-sex attraction when he was about 12. And he said, I never told anybody for years because my youth pastor, my friends would talk about gays and they would laugh about them. And that told me I'm not welcome here. And if I share my struggle, they're going to mock me. I was at the Olympics in 1996 and, uh, in Atlanta, and I had a chance to work in a t-shirt stand. And we we're selling t-shirts. And if you've ever been to an Olympics, it's amazing that people from all over, all different parts of the world, I mean, people come from the most far away places, from China, from India, from Africa, from Texas. <laughs> and people wear flags of where they're from because they're proud of it. And I was sitting here t selling t-shirts and this guy, I'm gonna remember, maybe 40, 45 comes walking up. And he had a huge rainbow flag just blazing across his sweatshirt. 
And I knew what that meant, but I couldn't think of a better way to get in a conversation. Give me grace. This is 18 years ago. I said, hey, that's an interesting flag. What country are you from? <laughs> it's all I could think of. This man looks at me in the eyes and he says, oh, this is his quote. He says, oh, it's a queer thing. I said, oh, so you wear that so people know that you're gay. He said, that's right. That's what the rainbow means. I said, do you mind if I ask you a question? He said, no. I said, you wear this publicly so people see it. Do people walking by sometimes make insults at you and degrade you because of this? He looked at me and said, yes, it actually happens somewhat frequently. And I just looked him in the eyes. I said, sir, I am so sorry that people would treat you that way. That's not right. I'm sorry. Have you ever looked at somebody and felt like their eyes were truly a window to the soul? I remember this guy was twice my age, and I just remember seeing this sadness, and he looked at me. He just paused. He said, thank you. He said, you're the nicest person I've met at the whole Olympics. Do you mind if I take a picture with you? I said, of course. And you know why? Because I thought maybe he's going to take this picture, put it on his fridge, and someone's going to see it and, so, and say, oh, don't you know who that is? That's a Christian. They're the enemy. And he'll say, no, no, he was kind to me. He was loving to me. Now, was I saying, hey, whatever choices you want to make is great, whatever floats your boat? No, I wasn't saying that. I was basically saying, you're a human being, and we don't treat human beings like dirt. It doesn't matter your race or your gender or your socioeconomic status or your age or your sexual orientation. Human beings are made in the image of God and deserve respect as image bearers. That's why Paul says, let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. 